Hi, my name is Johann Kruschwitz. I'm one of the developers of Grapha, and in this little tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform dynamic network analysis or sliding window analysis with respect to network topological measures um, in Grapha. So um, in the previous videos, I've shown you how to set up the general settings panel, and I'm going to dive right into it. So for um, sliding window analysis, we actually have to create our sliding windows. So we do this by our um, generate connectivity matrix function. So you would need um, to have pre-extracted um, time series signals from your nodes of interest, or so to say your brain regions of interest. Here at the very bottom, we have this checkbox sliding window analysis. We have to enable this, and then Grapha will tell you that it'll perform the sliding window technique with a defined window length and also step size. Here, the window size is basically how many time points are incorporated in one window and the step size is um, how many points in time this respective window is moved forward along in your time course for computing then the next window with window size 15. Okay, um, I do opt now to use the default Pearson correlation coefficient for generating my sliding window time series, but if you would like to do otherwise, you could also use those functions here at the top. So I'm going to my data where my signals are stored. I'm simply selecting all 30 subjects now. And I have, um, as I showed you in the previous video, my time courses are 150, 115 measurements. And this will result now with a window size of 50 and a step size of 10 and 11 sliding windows per participant. So see how, how this goes. and it's pretty fast. Okay, now I've computed for each individual um, a set of sliding windows. I'm just gonna toggle to my MATLAB window to um, give you um, an idea of how this looked like. You'll find this in your results, in the results folder of your respective workspace. And then there's a folder that is called core matrix. And here, this is where Grapha stores um, connectivity matrices which are generated with Grapha um, into this folder. Okay, just gonna open this up. And in here you see um, there's a cell core matrix. I open this up and this is for the first participant and in, in here we have 11 cells. So we basically have 11 um, of those sliding, of, of those windows which is slid 10 time points further in time and has basically a size of 15, 15. So those are my sliding windows now. It's basically so concatenated in, um, in this um, cell vector. Okay, I go back to Grapha and um, it has already loaded in the functional connectivity matrices. You also see here where, where they are stored in results, core matrix, and then uh, the respective sample name. As always, we'd have to highlight what our um, subject name is for Grapha to uh, connect it to the variable sheet where the same name would also have to appear in the first column. And then you see um, it pretty much looks the same as the regular user interface, but you'll notice that there are two little um, additional drop down windows, one here at the, bot at the top for the network calculations and also one here for the raw matrix. Um, now, there are basically three possibilities of what you can do with your sliding windows and your dynamic network analyses. The first opportunity is use Grapha as it is, construct your networks, and then calculate a respective um, network topological measure for each of the sliding windows. So here, as I showed you, we have 11 windows. If we would do it like this, let's say we threshold it on, uh, on the network, on the sparsity range from 0.4 to 0.5, so then here 50% of available connections would, would be present. Then um, for each of those sliding windows, they would be thresholded, and for each of the thresholded sliding windows, um, the let's say the um, here, local clustering coefficient would be calculated. Then you have the possibility because it's dynamic, so you have 11 windows um, for each individual to, and this is the first option, create a summary measure across the sliding window for this respective graph theory, 
theoretic metric. So you could now look at the um, summary measure variance over time. So this would basically tell you the variance of the local clustering of a specific region across time. Right? If it has a low variance, it's not changing. If it, if it has a high variance, the cluster coefficient heavily changes depending on the time point of the individual. Um, and there are other summary measures like standard deviation, periodicity, um, point process, the rate, and the point process, the interval. Please look at the um, dynamic graph tutorial, um, which is which we provide you also on our download page, but which you also download when you download Grapha. So it should be on your computer if you're if you're um, familiar with Grapha. And um, there we explain what those are. Okay, this is the first option that you can do here by simply using Grapha as it is, computing each of those um, network topological measures for each of the sliding windows and then generating a summary measure how this behaves over time. Here, um, it might actually be very useful to use another function that I did not um, talk about in the previous videos, which is the um, check fragmentation function. Because if you, um, are using summary metrics and you are concatenating the clustering of a specific region across time and this, the variance, then you would like um, that not out of a sudden this specific region that you're interested in is not connected to the rest of the network. So in maybe there is network fragmentation at some sliding windows in some point of time. And um, then um, the, the summary measure you're looking at might not be meaningful if, um, if something is missing right um, in the middle of the time courses. So we can have this check fragmentation. Um, it will now run. I'm gonna to toggle to the MATLAB window and here you see it is doing it for all the subjects, for all the windows and here you see the thresholds. Okay, now it's already done. So what happens is I am getting um, two windows. Now I am having an overview window um, which is giving me the thresholds, so 0.48 to 0.5, um, an overall sample status, and it says me, oh, look with your individuals um, on all those um, thresholds, there is fragmentation. And then it will um, tell me which of the individuals actually have those specific fragmentations in here, just as an overall view. Um, here, there's a detailed um, fragmentation log. So you'll have here, each individual, it's going through the individuals for the threshold 0.8 and then it's telling you the network fragmentation status here for this individual um, one and two, the 0.48 is okay, there is no fragmentation. Here we have the 11 windows um, as columns and whenever it says it's not okay, it's fragmented, it will put a one into the sliding window here, the um, here the 10th window of subject three, there seems to be some fragmentation. Um, so it could be something weird with the subject um, or it could, um, could just be that you'll have to use a higher sparsity for doing this and um, no, a lower, yeah, a higher sparsity. So more um, connections in your network. And um, this is just to show you that you can use this function um, to make sure that your sliding windows are actually always in all the sliding windows, all the nodes are part of the network and connected to the network. This is specifically important if you um, want to make inferences about the summary of um, how those properties change over time. But obviously, even if you're not in the dynamic mode, you can use the check fragmentation function to see whether there is any individual and obviously then you would just have one connectivity matrix whether there is fragmentation for, for, for any particular subject. Okay, having said this, there are also other possibilities if you go this upper um, workflow here by using the, those network calculations. We have included, and these are now additional um, um, dynamic metrics, which have nothing to do with the pre-implemented ones here from the Brain Connectivity Toolbox. So basically those are additional ones that, are not, that do not appear here. Um, so those are, a couple of um, measures that were introduced by Sizemore and colleagues in 2017 in EuroImage. Um, I think the paper is called Dynamic Network Measures and uh, Toolbox and Tail also. Um, I'm not exactly sure at the moment, but it's from the Daniel Bassett group. And so you could just 
now select any of those measures, then those are um, basically disabled. So gra you know Grapher is not doing anything um, with the regular metrics um, that you have um, opted in here. And okay, for some you'll act actually have to, to do some modifications, but please look at the manual of how this works. Um, and then there's a third option that uh, those are also additional measures which are not included in this one but which come from the network community toolbox from the Bassett lab. Um, it's a really nice community detection toolbox um, that is also available online and please check it out if you're interested in this and they have some nice dynamic measures which um, we included in here. So this is once the flexibility, um, community flexibility and promiscuity. Um, and also please have a look at the tutorial to see what this actually means. Um, so I'm disabling this again. Um, and now we also have kind of the same option here for the raw connectivity matrix. So it looks the same, but we have this drop down window um, giving us the possibility of now also creating summary measures of the change of functional connectivity and here you know it's basically a mass univariate approach across um, the entire matrix for all the respective matrix elements to see for example if uh, connectivity between any pair of region varies over time and then we have the same um, as, impl uh, as implemented here um, at the bottom. But we have um, another one which is here at the very bottom, the brain network variability. This operates in fully connected um, matrices and brain network variability is a measure that was introduced here in brain by Zhang and colleagues and I'm gonna scroll down um, to show you um, basically kind of the formula or what this is doing is basically measuring the variability of the um, connectivity pattern of a specific region to the rest of the brain over time right and if the variability is high then a region changes um, yeah, it's, 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 it's cooperation partners a lot and if the variability is low then the functional connectivity pattern um, by, by means of the vector um, of functional connectivity, yeah, strength does not change to the rest of the brain too much. So check this paper out if you want to know um, what can be done. Um, now I'll get, want to run um, an, an example analysis for you. Um, for example, we don't, now in this one, I do not want to use any thresholding here. So I have also not run into the problem that I have any network fragmentation because I'll now operate on the fully connected networks of each individual. Um, you may remember um, from one of my talks, um, I think in the second video of, for the introduction of um, brain network analysis, this example where um, Brown and colleagues um, showed that individuals with greater network reconfiguration frontal cortices showed enhanced memory performance and also scored higher on, um, on test challenging cognitive flexibility. What they basically did is they had this n back task where you had a zero back and a two back condition and they created sliding windows for a specific task dependent time course. Now I'm going to do this for resting state, but for each of the sliding windows, we now have 11 in our example, which I just generated with Grafa. They compute the community structure for each of, the, uh, for each of those windows. And then you can access um, the, the change of the regions to, with respect to their modular alliance. So basically um, assess their flexibility over time. So a region has a high flexibility, if it changes um, 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 its membership, of the modules across time and has low flexibility if it always stays in the modules, right? And here they've found with this kind of complex analysis that the higher the flexibility in frontal regions, um, the better your memory performance is. Okay, this is a seems like a really, really complicated analysis and it actually is, but I'm going to show you that we can do this now with just simple clicks in Grafa. So um, we have computed our dynamic connectivity metrics. We go to the select dynamic. This is dynamic community flexibility. This is what um, has been used by Brown um, and colleagues in this paper. Um, we'd have to do 
a couple of averaging here because this is a stochastic nature as you know the the community detection algorithm and i'm going to speak about this in another video where i'm introducing the community um, um, structure module in grapha um, but we'll have to um, perform some averaging here we just say 100 and it automatically selected the multi-slice affiliation vector which is a function that has to be performed with Grapha um, to, for being able to compute this flexibility. You don't have to care about all this, um, about all this stuff. And then um, let's create maybe um, yeah, the variance over time um, for our raw connectivity matrix without thresholding this. We also apply no changes and we just um, relate this now to IQ and this is my sample data but um, at least we have IQ basically would, which may come similar to Brown and colleagues. Okay and um, maybe we want to regress out handedness for this. Okay um, now we just simply start our analysis. It will tell me um, that there can be zeros in there so it detected zeros right um, and that's could be kind of a problem for the um, for this multi-slice um, affiliation vector. So we will not continue with this and we will here set negative weights to zero. There are other community detection algorithms which can also deal with negative weights, but for this one it is not the case. Okay, now it works. Now we go to Grapha and this is the output of this um, dynamic community detection algorithm where it's merging the communities, optimizing them across, uh, across time for each individual. And it's now computing this a couple of times. This might take a couple of minutes. That's why I gonna um, cut the video here and um, make it the process a little bit shorter. Okay, so here we are again now, um, this, anal this analysis run a couple of minutes and we have computed successfully the association of IQ to um, the brain network flexibility, the one that I showed you here as similar as in the brown paper. Now let's have a look at this. So here, um, if we just have one measure, we'll have to um, add the intercept term for display because Grapha always wants to display at least two things in, in, in its display. So this was kind of a technical solution here for us. But um, this is um, similar to what I showed you in the other videos. So um, the strength of the association here um, for IQ uh, to the network flexibility of the respective region. So those are the regions here um, is color coded. And now we can again um, hide non-significant links and we see there just just a couple of brain regions which actually have a significant um, dynamic community flexibility so this would in our example now be the post central gyrus with the association of its flexibility to iq and here to other regions um, we didn't do any parametric testing you could also as i showed you in my previous video run some permutation tests but here in the end um, it really doesn't work because we didn't do any permutations. So it will display the same as the parametric ones. We can do some um, application of FDR correction. Now the FDR correction would give us our new FDR corrected p-value. And we would see there is one region here, the post central gyrus, which have, would have a negative association of its flexibility because we can see here there's a beta weight of negative 0.48 to IQ. Um, which is still significant after FDR correction for all the comparisons. Okay, um, so this was just with a couple of clicks, the really complicated analysis of Brown and colleagues. Well, we can also now look at um, the connectivity area with respect to um, the association of IQ to the variance of the functional connectivity strength over time. And see here are clearly some um, positive associations to the variance. So if the IQ is bigger, then the variance of those links would also be higher. And um, also the reverse pattern. So if the IQ is higher, then the variance of the functional connectivity over time would be smaller. And we can again now do an FDR correction 
But here in this case, because, because we have so many comparisons, nothing is actually um, significant. And we didn't do any random permutations, so we can also not use those functions. So basically it will just show, as I just said, the parametric version of it. But let's just pretend um, that we would have done any uh, sort of correction here, for example, linkwise correction, um, but by setting this a little bit higher to make the graph components a little bit smaller. Now you could, similar as I showed in the other videos, um, with the get component function or with the network-based statistics one, even identify subnetworks that are not only associated to a specific um, effect of interest, like in a stationary network to IQ, network that is related to IQ, but you can now also get a specific component that um, is defined by um, the, the, the variation. So now here we looked at the variance of um, functional connectivity over time. And the rest would basically work in the same way as, um, as I showed in the previous video. So here we would have those two components, one positive and one negative, um, which would be related to the variance of the functional connectivity over time. We could only just also look at the positive one, which is the smaller one, no, this is the negative one, and here the positive one, um, which is here. Okay, so this is just to give you some ideas of what you can do with our um, dynamic network flexibilities. And um, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.